This is an educational podcast or educast created by Jim House, Assistant Professor of Computer Science and Communication Arts Technology at Allegheny College of Maryland. For more information about Allegheny College of Maryland, please visit us on the web at allegheny.edu. A typical computer ad contains a long list of specifications that describe a computer's components and capabilities. Savvy shoppers understand how these specifications affect computer performance and price. Most computer specifications begin with the microprocessor type and speed. Computer manufacturers want consumers to think that faster is better, but is there a point at which you can pay for speed that you won't need? Computer ads also contain information about a computer's memory capacity. Lots of memory can add hundreds of dollars to the cost of a computer. Consumers are right to ask, well, how much RAM is enough? This podcast explains how the microprocessor and memory work and how they affect computer performance and price. A microprocessor, sometimes simply referred to as a processor, is an integrated circuit, or IC, designed to process instructions. It's the most important and usually the most expensive component of a computer. Although a microprocessor is sometimes mistakenly referred to as a computer on a chip, It can be more accurately described as a CPU on a chip because it contains on a single chip circuitry that performs essentially the same tasks as a central processing unit or CPU of a classic mainframe computer. Inside the chip carrier, a microprocessor is a very complex integrated circuit containing as many as 300 million miniaturized electronic components. The miniaturized circuitry in a microprocessor is grouped into important functional areas such as the ALU and the control unit. The ALU, or Arithmetic Logic Unit, performs arithmetic operations such as addition and subtraction. It also performs logical operations such as comparing two numbers to see if they are the same. The ALU's registers to hold data that is being processed, just as you use a mixing bowl to hold the ingredients for a batch of brownies. The microprocessor's control unit fetches each instruction, just as you would get each ingredient out of the cupboard or the refrigerator. The computer loads data into the ALU's registers just as you add all of the ingredients to the mixing bowl. Finally, the control unit gives the ALU the green light to begin processing just as you would flip the switch onto your electronic mixer to begin blending the brownie ingredients. The list of instructions that a microprocessor can perform is called its instruction set. These instructions are hardwired into the processor's circuitry and include basic arithmetic and logical operations, fetching data, and clearing registers. A computer can perform very complex tasks, but it does so by performing a combination of simple tasks from its instruction set. Computer ads like to include microprocessor specifications relating to its performance. A microprocessor's performance is affected by several factors, including clock speed, word size, cache size, instruction set, and processing techniques. The speed specifications that you see in a computer ad indicate the speed of the microprocessor clock, a timing device that sets the pace for executing instructions. Most computer ads specify the speed of a microprocessor in megahertz or gigahertz. Megahertz, typically written out as a capital M and a capital H with lowercase z, means millions of cycles per second, while gigahertz, which is usually displayed as a capital G, a capital H, and lowercase z, means billions of cycles per second. A cycle is the smallest unit of time in a microprocessor's universe. Every action a processor performs is measured by these cycles. It's important, however, to understand that the clock speed is not equal to the number of instructions a processor can execute in one second. In many computers, some instructions occur within one cycle, but other instructions might require multiple cycles. Some processors can even execute several instructions in a single clock cycle. A specification such as 3.6 GHz means that the microprocessor's clock operates at a speed of 3.6 billion cycles per second. All other things being equal, a computer with a 2.8 GHz processor is faster than a computer with a 1.5 GHz processor or even a 933 MHz processor. Some people may ask, which is faster, a 32-bit processor or a 64-bit processor? Word size refers to the number of bits that a microprocessor can manipulate at one time. Word size is based on the size of the registers in the ALU and the capacity of the circuits that lead to those registers. A processor with a 32-bit word size, for example, has 32-bit registers, processes 32 bits at a time, and is referred to as a 32-bit processor. Processors with a larger word size can process more data during each processor cycle, a factor that leads to increased computer performance. Today's personal computers typically contain 32-bit or 64-bit processors. Cache is sometimes called RAM cache or cache memory. 
It's a special high-speed memory that allows a microprocessor to access data more rapidly than from memory located elsewhere on the system board. Some computer ads specify cache type and capacity. A level 1 cache, or L1, is built into the microprocessor chip, whereas a level 2 cache, or L2, is located on a separate chip and takes a little more time to get data to the processor. Cache capacity is usually measured in kilobytes. In theory, a large cache increases processing speed. In today's computers, however, cache size is usually tied to a particular processor brand and model. Cache size is not of particular significance to consumers because it's not configurable. For example, you can't add more L1 cache to your computer without replacing the entire microprocessor. As chip designers developed various instruction sets for microprocessors, they tended to add increasingly more complex instructions, each requiring several clock cycles for execution. A microprocessor with such an instruction set uses CISC for execution, or a complex instruction set computer. A microprocessor with a limited set of simple instruction uses RISC, or reduced instruction set computer technology. A RISC processor performs most instructions faster than a CISC computer. It might, however, require more of these simple instructions to complete a task than a CISC processor requires for the same task. Most processors in today's Macs use RISC technology, while most PCs use CISC technology. Some microprocessors execute instructions serially. That is one instruction at a time. With serial processing, the processor must complete all the steps in the instruction cycle before it begins to execute the next instruction. However, using a technology called pipelining, a processor can begin execution of an instruction before it completes the previous instruction. Many of today's microprocessors also perform parallel processing in which multiple instructions are executed at the same time. Pipelining and parallel processing enhance processor performance. Various testing labs run a series of tests to gauge the overall speed of a microprocessor. The results of these tests are called benchmarks and can be compared to the results of other microprocessors. The results of benchmark tests are usually available on the web and published in computer magazine articles. Random Access Memory, or RAM, is a temporary holding area for data, application program instructions, and the operating system. In a personal computer, RAM is usually several chips or small circuit boards that plug into the system board with the computer's system unit. A computer's RAM capacity is invariably included in a list of specifications in a computer ad. The amount of RAM in a computer can affect the overall price of a computer system. To understand how much RAM your computer needs and to understand the computer ad terminology, it's handy to have a little background on how RAM works and what it does. RAM is the waiting room for the computer's processor. It holds raw data waiting to be processed as well as the program instructions for processing that data. In addition, RAM holds the results of processing until they can be stored more permanently on a disk or tape. Let's look at an example. When you use personal finance software to balance your checkbook, you enter raw data for check amounts, which is held in RAM. The personal finance software sends the instructions for processing this data to RAM. The processor uses these instructions to calculate your checkbook balance and sends the results back to RAM. From RAM, your checkbook balance can be stored on a disk and displayed and or printed. In RAM, microscopic electronic paths called capacitors hold the bits that represent data. You can visualize the capacitors as microscopic lights that can be turned on or off. A charge capacitor is turned on and represents a 1 bit. A discharge capacitor is turned off and represents a 0 bit. Each bank of capacitors holds 8 bits, or 1 byte of data. A RAM address on each bank helps the computer locate data as it is needed for processing. Unlike disk storage, most RAM is volatile, which means it requires electrical power to hold data. If the computer is suddenly turned off or the power goes out, all data stored in RAM instantly and permanently disappears. When someone exclaims, rats, I just lost my document, it often means that the person was entering the text of the document, which was being held in RAM, and then the power went off before they were able to save the work to disk. RAM speed is often expressed in nanoseconds or megahertz. One nanosecond, or NS, is one billionth of a second. In the context of RAM speed, lower nanosecond ratings are better because it means the RAM circuitry can react faster to update the data it holds. For example, 8 nanoseconds of RAM is faster than 10 nanoseconds of RAM. RAM speed can also be expressed in megahertz, or millions of cycles per second. Just the opposite of nanoseconds, higher megahertz ratings means faster speeds. For example, 533 megahertz of RAM is faster than 400 megahertz of RAM. Most of today's personal computers use SDRAM or RDRAM. SDRAM, Synchronous Dynamic Random Access Memory, is fast and relatively inexpensive. 
Recent innovations such as dual-channel technology and double data rate, or DDR, innovations have increased SD RAM speed. RDRAM, Rambus Dynamic Random Access Memory, was first developed for the popular Nintendo 64 game system and then adapted for use in personal computers. RDRAM is more expensive than SDRAM and is usually found in high-performance workstations. RAM is configured as a series of dips soldered into a small circuit board. ROM, or read-only memory, is a type of memory circuitry that holds the computer startup routine. ROM is housed in a single integrated circuit, usually a fairly large Caterpillar-like dip package which is plugged into the system board. Whereas RAM is temporary and volatile, ROM is permanent and non-volatile. ROM circuitry holds hardwired instructions that are a permanent part of the circuitry and remain in place even when the computer power is turned off. This is a familiar concept to anyone who has used a handheld calculator that includes various hardwired routines for calculating square roots, cosines, and other functions. The instructions in ROM are permanent and the only way to change them is to replace the ROM chip. ROM contains a small set of instructions called the ROM BIOS, Basic Input Output System. These instructions tell the computer how to access the hard disk, find the operating system, and load it into RAM. After the operating system is loaded, the computer can understand your input, display output, run software, and access your data. CMOS memory, complementary metal oxide semiconductor memory, pronounced CMOS, is a type of chip that requires very little power to hold data. It can be powered by a small battery that's integrated into the system board and automatically recharges while your computer's power is turned on. The battery trickles down to the CMOS chip so that it can retain vital data about your computer system's configuration even when your computer power is turned off. When you change the configuration of your computer system by adding RAM, for example, the data in CMOS must be updated. Some operating systems recognize such changes and automatically perform the update. You can manually change CMOS settings by running the CMOS setup program. Different buyers have different needs, so your first step in buying a computer is to assess your budget and think about how you plan to use your computer. Armed with an understanding of the terminology used in the previous podcast, you can begin to look at ads and visit online computer stores and better arm yourself with the knowledge that you have gained. This has been an Educast podcast brought to you by Jim House and Allegheny College of Maryland.